All right, welcome, my friends, to another edition of Extreme Health Radio. I apologize for those of you that are watching online uh, on the live show. We are very late today, and I do apologize for that. We had some major technical issues. We were going to get Morley Robbins on the show, along with our good friend Adam Bergstrom, and kind of have a discussion about lipofuscin, about uh, yellow fat disease, fish oil. We're still going to do that, but we're not going to have Morley Robbins on the show. Unfortunately, having some real issues with our audio, so um, I do apologize for that. So um, anyway, I hope you guys are having a great Friday wherever you are listening in the world today. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you're new to the show, we do shows um, every single week on Friday mornings at 1045 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, and we do those live on YouTube and on Facebook. Uh, for as long as they will have us. We don't know how long that will be, but we, we do them for as long as we'll, <laughs> Facebook will have us. So we got um, Adam Bergstrom on Skype today, and we're going to talk about yellow fat disease. You know, he's written 12 books about what they call lipofuscinosis or yellow fat disease. Can you believe that? I mean, like, I couldn't even write one book. I mean, what is there to write about, right? So we'll ask him about um this issue, lipofuscinosis, and that is uh, what happens as a result of consuming omega-3 fatty acids in the form of fish oils, canola oil, and all these types of oils that go rancid in the body. But I guess that could come from, you know, tying that to every single disease that there is, and that's where probably he gets all the information for, from writing all the books. So um, this is episode 680. So if you guys want to get the show notes for today's show, just go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash 680 and we have some sales going on too with our uh, Relax Far Infrared Sauna and the Aqua Cure and if you guys are watching live right now you guys are going to get access to this because when this audio comes out on Sunday night the sale is going to be over because the sale runs to 1159 p.m. Pacific time tonight for the Aqua Cure and the Relax Sauna I'll tell you more about that later. Okay, so um, let me read you Adam's bio, and if you guys don't know, I mean, he's been on the show a million times, so there, I probably don't even need to read his bio, but he's been teaching workshops and seminars across the USA since 1977. He's the head of, or sort of brought to light, the popular eating style called chronobiology, and that is uh, solar nutrition, eating on time, and how that affects uh, everything in the body, and he's been doing this, been working with people for gosh, 50 years and um, got a really, really awesome background. And what I like about Adam is he's a, um, he's a contrarian among contrarians. So when you get into the alternative health industry, you kind of get the same stuff, right? You get, oh gosh, intermittent fasting is good, sugar is bad, uh, vitamin D is good, and all these types of things. Fish oil is healthy. And he's definitely has a complete 180 degrees opposite take on all that. So that's why we love having Adam on. So let me turn his audio up. And Adam, okay, so we're broadcasting live right now. Everything is running. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you clear <laughs> as a bell. <laughs> oh, great. Gosh, because for those that don't know, we've been doing some audio technical issues for, gosh, what seems like an hour. Um, anyway, Adam, I wanted to have you on the show with Morley to talk about lipofuscin and yellow fat disease. So first, before we get into some of what, what I think Morley was going to say, um, let's get into you. Was I correct in saying you've already finished or you just started writing your 12th book on this? I'm three quarters done with the 12th book, and it should be available maybe probably before the year is up. My goodness. How long are these books? Um, they're about, they're, they're, uh, you could call them mini books, but they actually have a lot of detail in them. Uh -huh. And now I'm offering a compendium, 99 bucks for all of them. Even if the people have bought the compendium, they get the new ones automatically for free. Oh, wow. So, so I started with three larger books. Uh, and then the information keeps coming and getting, uh, what do you call it, updated. In mm -hmm. fact, right now, we're at a juggernaut, basically, because the drug companies have now found out how profitable omega-3s can be. And so there are 88 drugs in the pipeline involving DHA and EPA. 88 you, drugs. So what do you mean involving? You mean that have EPA or uh, DHA in them? 
they enhance it, their additives, whatever they're doing with them, it's getting crazy. There's already two. In fact, some friends called, uh, there was a, a person who was having heart problems and things like that. Mm -hmm. It turned out they were taking a drug called Viscopa, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And uh, it turns out to be EEPA. In other words, it's fish oil uh, that has been enhanced and bioengineered. And so if they're taking something that actually causes the heart problems they're treating it for. Oh my, and well that, that's, I mean, that makes total sense coming from the, you know, drug industry, right? I mean, that sounds exactly like what they would want to do, right? You know, they, they kill more people than they help, definitely. Mm -hmm. In fact, almost every drug is counterproductive, except a few basic ones. You can say the thyroid drug, the Centroid, some of those, have uh are okay but uh everything else is just made up and statistically supposedly one percent difference well 33 percent by ama standards is placebo so how can they give a drug that has a one percent difference like satin and call it a drug that does anything it's crazy so i just shared this something uh, i'm going to show it to those that are watching live this is on our extreme health radio instagram and so it says it's just a little meme that says it's called a medical practice uh be careful who you let practice on you and i said iatrogenic death uh which is medical errors is the is the quote the third leading cause of death after heart disease and cancer this is from the um, PubMed that actually said this, and it says here, quote, the fully referenced report shows the number of people having in-hospital adverse reactions to prescribed drugs to be 2.2 million per year. The number of unnecessary antibiotics prescribed annually for viral infections is 20 million per year. The number of unnecessary medical and surgical procedures performed annually is 7.5 million per year. The number of people exposed to unnecessary hospitalization annually is 8.9 million per year. And this is still within the quotes. It says here, the most stunning statistic, however, is that the total number of deaths caused by conventional medicine is an astounding 783,936 per year at a cost of $282 billion. I mean, how crazy is that, right? That's nuts. The really interesting thing is the person who invented the term iatrogenesis is Ivan Illich, and he divided it into clinical iatrogenesis and uh, cultural and um, social. Those three are different. The one you read off is the one that where they make mistakes in medicine. Mm -hmm. Most of the deaths are caused by the non-mistakes, the doctors who practice medicine exactly as it should be practiced, those kill most. So though uh, iatrogenesis of the clinical type is number three on the list of how people die, the other ones are on number one. So actually more people are killed by drugs. We would have a longevity of uh, an extra 10 years on human life if we just stayed away from doctors completely and didn't even go to see anybody uh, anyways. Doctors know, and I heard this from a doctor himself years ago at a lecture, he said uh -huh. that doctors know that 90% of all diseases, even serious ones, resolve themselves if you leave them alone. This includes cancer, and many other diseases too, tuberculosis, heart disease, they go away by themselves if you just ignore them. Stay home, watch a Marx Brothers movie, Jim Carrey, whatever <laughs> floats your boat, yeah. and get well. So, Norman Cousins, perfect example. Let me see if I can understand this correctly. So the number one and number two cause of death is heart, uh, cancer and heart disease, right? So you got those two, and then the, then the, then the number three is the iatrogenic death, which is uh, the doctor does something, someone dies during a surgery, doctor makes a mistake or something like that, someone overdoses. But what you're saying is like there's a percentage within the first two, the cancer and heart disease, that is also caused by uh, doctors and medicines and things like that, but it's not listed because they're actually doing the prescribed standard of care and they die as a result of that, but they label it as, like if someone dies basically from chemotherapy poisoning, 
but they had cancer. So they say they died of cancer, but really it's the chemo. So then you can add those from the one and two and the number three, and it's probably way higher then, right? Way higher. Uh, in fact, let's take blood transfusions. They kill a lot of people because people don't know a blood transfusion is a transplant and it makes the iron toxic and the iron in your body starts killing you with one. Now, the doctors say you can't get hemocytosis, and I'm sure Morley was going to talk about this. Mm -hmm. You can't get hemocytosis or hemochromatosis, two different forms, without mm -hmm. getting 50 units of blood. But actually, one unit is enough to cause a reaction in the lungs and make iron toxic to you the rest of your life. So this is coming from blood transfusions? That's right. The Jehovah's Witnesses have known that for years. I first found out about it in 1959 or 1960 when I worked at Thrifty Drugstore, and this elderly lady used to hand out the Watchtower uh, pamphlets, and I read all about blood transfusions back then. Doctors know now. They finally, uh, they finally decided they would give Jehovah's Witnesses the right to not get transfusions. And many of the doctors now don't give transfusions because they found out the survival rate is much higher in people that don't get blood transfusions. One thing they can do, they can put you in a hyperbaric chamber, and you don't even need any red blood cells in your entire bloodstream to get oxygen to your cells under two, uh, double the pressure, double the uh, atmospheric pressure, 66, uh, like going down 33 feet in the ocean. Wow. So you're saying that you could theoretically um, get on a hyperbaric oxygen, um, you know, get in one of these chambers that they have all around the world, and you can use that in place of, would you have to do that on a regular basis in order to not do the blood transfusions? Uh, all you have to do is uh, stay in there for uh, two or three days under pressure. They used to have a six-story pressurized hospital like that, an entire pressurized hospital in Missouri. Uh, before the Second World War, they broke it down for tank parts and things like that. It went back into uh, no one heard about it till my friend George Wellington Adams, who was a hard hat diver around the world, trained astronauts to dive. He mm -hmm. brought it back into popularity, and now we have hyperbaric chambers thanks to my friend George. The Leather Tiger, by the way, was his name. He was at uh, Guadalcanal. <laughs> That's so funny, the Leather Tiger. So, yeah, so for those that are interested, we did a, a show with Dr. Scott Schur. Um, gosh, it must have been like six months ago or eight months ago now. And if you're subscribed to our iTunes audio feed, um, you'll get a show every single day. And on Sunday nights, we do the best of, or on Sunday nights, we do the new episodes. So this show with Adam will be available on Sunday night. But then the other six days of the week, around 10 p.m. Pacific, you get a brand new show that's sort of our best of archive one. And Adam, the one that was just from a couple days ago was that um, interview we did with Dr. Scott Schur. And the whole thing was about hyperbaric oxygen and what that does. And um, it's fascinating uh, technology, isn't it? There is one problem. Uh, oxygen causes brain damage, even one session and even oxygen when you get it in the hospital. That's why many people are dying of the beer bug these days because of respirators. But there's a solution. All you have to do is add 3% carbon dioxide to oxygen and then it becomes a benefit and there is no brain damage whatsoever. Ray Pete even uh, says go up to 5% or so. But in all the old mining uh, uh, books that I've gone through from the past, they use 3% with high success. That's been forgotten now. The hyperbaric people are giving them pure oxygen. And actually, you can cure uh, diabetic gangrene, all kinds of things, but at a price for your brain. It definitely causes brain damage. Just add 3% carbon dioxide, no problem. So how would you do that? Would 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 the person administering it understand this or not? Uh, yes, but hospitals don't do it. It's sold as carbogen. Carbogen is a 5% mixture, and that works fine. Now, uh, some people use 7%, but, uh, but the first time it was used, according to Ray Pete, uh, 
the so much sweat came out of the person because it does make you sweat and perspire. It's a detox uh, that they couldn't even see through the glass to the person in the hyperbaric <laughs> chamber. And by the wow. way, I've known people who have had their own pi- hyperbaric chambers and naturopaths back in Port Arthur, Texas, and other people too, where they mm-hmm. gave it a lot cheaper. Here in uh, down where you are near San Diego. They have portable ones that they bring out for divers, but those things could save lives. Just add 5% carbon dioxide to the mix, and you could save a variety of conditions from diabetic gangrene to, uh, well, there's there's a list. that. Do you think this would work on, like, uh, diabetes uh, type 1 and type 2? Uh, yes. Well, for the gangrene on it, it's not going to cure diabetes. In fact, ironically, sugar is the cure for uh, type 1 diabetes. I'm partly kidding because actually it is the therapy for it. In other words, they think that sugar is what causes type 1 diabetes. It's actually fatty acids. Uh, omega-3 fatty acids were back to yellow fat disease. But uh-huh. what they don't realize is that when you don't take sugar, the diabetic make sugar out of his own protein and eats it up and eventually dies. Well, uh-huh. William Budd, back in uh, about the time of the Civil War, before the Civil War, realized that the problem was they were eating their own protein. So he gave them, uh, let me see, 12 ounces of white sugar per day plus four ounces of honey. And that was about the average because you have to measure how much sugar is coming out and how much is going in. You don't want too much because the additional sugar can cause a damage. Hospitals could save type 1 diabetics' lives by simply giving them the right amount of sugar that came out of their blood every day mm-hmm. as a treatment, and they could live long lives. Mm, so interesting. Um Okay, so let's just start in with this uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, and I know we've done some shows on this, and um, for those of you that might be listening thinking, okay, this guy's crazy, sugar is, is bad for diabetes, right, um, and the real cause is, is omega-3s, um, so what you have to do is not search benefits of omega-3, you have to, <laughs> or, you know, you, you have to search, you know, yellow fat disease or lipofuscin or lipofuscinosis, these types of things, and there's other terms for it, too. Um, so just, just know that when you're searching for this stuff, cause you're going to get, I mean, how many articles are there, Adam, about the benefits? There's like thousands of articles about the benefits of that, right? 40,000 positive, uh, studies. And isn't it interesting in, in yellow fat or in omega-3 fatty acids, they always have 40,000 studies, 400 participants, even 400 people come to their meetings about omega-3s. What is it with the four? 40, 400, 4,000, and 40,000 studies. So That's something's weird, very right? suspicious. Because I, yeah. I, I saw this study, uh, but the latest group, there's a cartel, is talking about that study. And when I put 40,000 in, to my amazement, it kept on coming up with 40,000, 40,000 with all kinds of different studies. And it just doesn't make sense. Wow. That's so. Okay. So let's talk a little bit for those that might be new to this conversation when it comes to omega 3 fish oil, because we're told that they're good for you and they lower inflammation and all this kind of just sort of main, mainstream alternative information. So let's just start at the beginning and just talk a little bit about, okay, what is this oil doing? Because here's, here's one thing that people, you know, constantly say. Well, I, I had a doctor say this on our Instagram recently that he's, He's got a really great pure product, and it's done with nitrogen flush, and it's cold processed, and all this kind of stuff. But there's an issue because our bodies are 98.6 degrees, right? And so that's doesn't matter how the product is, right? It, it has to do with our internal te- uh, body temperature, right? Right. And uh, someone asked me, well, the, the exact question. In fact, it's in my latest book. I just added it yesterday. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, if it's nitrogen packed then it's not going to be rancid. Well, half of the studies in my 12 books are from animals getting it. Now, what bear takes omega-3 supplements? They get it as fresh as it gets. They get the raw fish. They get the fresh fish. They're eating it. Salmon get it. If you give a fish with less omega-3s in to a fish with more, Did I say that right? I said it backwards. Mm -hmm. More DHA to a fish with less, they get yellow fat disease. In fact, all 
protoplasm, all protoplasm gets yellow fat disease. It's a measure of aging. Incorrectly, they put it's a measure of chronobiological aging or chronological aging, rather. Chronological aging. But with humans, we are omnivores. We can be vegans, we can be keto, so we can control it. It's really biological aging, not chronological aging. But other animals, of course, they eat the same thing. They're in a certain area, they're stuck with the diet. They don't get to go to a big boy's or to a fancy steakhouse or to a health food restaurant. They just get what's there. Human beings, we are living in different countries, different ideas. And right here in Santa Barbara, I can be a vegan, I can be a keto, I can be any of that. And so I can control my oxidation process in my own body. Do you think that from a food perspective or a nutrition perspective, this is is one of the most important things? Because I know Morley talks a lot about the iron, excess iron and, you know, things like that, but in proper mineral balancing, but it seems like from a mineral perspective, or I'm sorry, from a nutrition perspective, it's the balancing of these, uh, of these rancid oils we're putting in our body. That's really kind of moving the needle more than anything else. Right. I, I believe uh, now Morley seems to think that the iron is what makes the omega threes toxic. I have it the opposite. The omega threes are what makes the iron toxic toxic because uh, I look at iron at a perspective. It is the most important mineral in the periodic table of the elements. Why? Iron 56 is the dividing line between fission and fusion. It's the middle of the middle of the body. That is where elements either break down or they build up it's the difference between a hydrogen bomb and an atomic bomb right in that element but the control of it you have to watch about supplementation of iron for a long time i've known about the dangers of iron in fact i'll give you a, a story one time i worked in a uh, health food store in austin texas and a man walked by in the mall, this was in a mall, and he walked by looking like Tom Cruise in the uh, vampire movie, remember the <laughs> Anne Rice vampire movie? So he's got a tape yeah. and everything on, and I happened to catch his eyes. So he looks at me, and he deliberately stops walking and walks up to me and says, I am not a vampire. I said, I figured you weren't, uh, but it's interesting that uh, you have an iron overload. Uh, it's that you're not a vampire. He said, how can you tell that by your complexion? And he said, really? I am a vegetarian. I don't eat any meat. And I said, well, you can get uh, iron overload from other things than meat. And he said, for instance, what? He challenged me. I said, black olives out of a can that have uh, ferrous fumarate in them. He said, oh, my God, I eat two cans of black olives a day. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. How when you fun. see a person with a gray or a brown complexion, or if you're an iridologist, you can spot iron overload quite easily. Uh, you need a slit lamp. I used to use a slit lamp as an iridologist when I practiced JDEX type of iridology. Mm -hmm. And you can see the little, little black dots look like a swarm of, uh, of uh, little uh, black dots. <laughs> and... Uh, they indicate iron overload, which causes congestive heart failure and everything else. Iron in the liver, uh, you're gone. As soon as you have that kind of uh, reading in your iris, there's not much you can do for a person. Iron kills, no doubt about it. Yeah, it's interesting. So you're saying completely the opposite. So Morley's argument is that um, in an iron toxic body, and you know his argument is that this is what we all have through the iron fortification program in 1941, doubling again in 1969, adding iron filings to our food, the soils being liberated through acid rain with iron, and there's excess iron everywhere, and also in uh, vegetarian foods and plant foods as well. So his, his argument is we have all this excess iron, then when you put omega-3s into a body that's got all that extra iron, that's the problem, all right? This oxidation, this lipid peroxidation that occurs. Uh, but what you're saying is that the iron is what's making, are you saying the total opposite, right? 
I understood that. I correctly. really am. Yeah, the uh, in fact, uh, look at what is lipid peroxidation. It's oxygen meets fatty acids. It has nothing to do with iron because magnesium can do it too. Uh, copper can do it too. All of the other elements can do it too. It happens though that iron is extra virulent. And by the way, on cod liver oil causing yellow fat disease and death by it, right here, my earliest reference is Friedrich. Theodore Frerich, A Clinical Treatise on Diseases of the Liver, Volume 2, 1879. That's how far it goes back. And I'm sure if I research more, cod liver oil has been killing people for a long time. Now, small amounts aren't going to bother you. Uh, they, they add to your aging, but they're going to chip off uh, a week from your life, a month from your life. Who's going to notice? And they do cure vitamin A uh, deficiencies, vitamin D deficiencies. But the mm -hmm. funny thing is, guess what? Most cod liver oil today isn't cod liver oil. It's shark liver oil because a shark liver can be 700 pounds. There's a lot more money in it, even though it's illegal now. But at one point during the uh, Second World War, uh, we couldn't get our Norwegian uh, cod liver oil. So they switched right here in California to the uh, soup fin shark. And uh, you could get uh, $45 uh, for a liver back in 1942. It, it's right in Popular Mechanics magazine. Anybody can see it. And in fact, boatloads of uh, uh, fishermen became as rich as movie stars as the Popular Mechanics article uh it calls it because one boat could come in with twenty thousand dollars worth of shark livers, and uh, today Pollock, all kinds of other things. Have you heard of the uh, Sally Fallon scandal about the fermented fish oil? By the way, I have, Coffee. I have definitely, yeah, yeah. Explain a little bit about that. It's super fascinating. People are dying all over the place, and a lot of them are 29, 39. You know, the dentist who wrote the book about uh, teeth, I uh, forget his name, Nagel, Nagel, and a whole bunch of others uh, died. And one of the wives of uh, Doc someone or other, the names uh, escape me, uh, I first found out about this in 2014 when Sally Fallon was going to excommunicate a guy because he said, you can't ferment an oil. It rots. And so she was going to let him go. Well, recently, and I added it into the new book, uh, I went back to look that up and found out that it had developed where people were dying from it. And by the way, I have the quotes in one of my 12 books uh, about <laughs> the uh, doctor, doctor, doctor. Uh, um, uh, what's his name, Susie? Dr. Weston A. Price. Dr. Oh, Weston, Weston Price. A. Price. Uh, he knew about fermented oil, and I have a quote where he said it was really toxic for a person. It was rancid, and he said you must get the clear that you can see it through cod liver oil, and that's why he recommended and endorsed Squibb Pharmaceuticals, which made the cod liver oil that he endorsed. So okay. uh, anyway, there's a whole the scandal has expanded it to another brand that uh, that the uh, people at the Western A Press Foundation, whatever it's called, have recommended. Mm -hmm. And uh, they even have a child molesting scandal part, which I'm not interested in that part. I'm interested no. <laughs> in the biological part. Wow. OK, so going back to what you mentioned before about the cod liver oil and most of it, you said, is coming from shark liver. Um, how do we know that for sure? And um, is there a way like I, I guess it doesn't really matter, even if it, it is straight cod liver oil, at least in your mind, you're saying that even if it is cod liver oil, not shark oil, it's still rancid, right? Definitely. And they've been, they've been using pollock oil and other oils for a long time. The, uh, actually, the cod is a fairly safe fish to eat if you avoid the liver because all of the oil is in the liver. It's uh -huh. what's called a dry fish. Now, it, isn't it interesting that the longest lived fish probably in the ocean uh, or one of the longest lifts is always on the bottom of the DHA list, orange roughy. They mm -hmm. live from 150 to 200 years. A salmon an oily fish, they live for like nine years if they're lucky. Uh, in fact, they, uh, they breed so seldom that they become a protected fish now, the orange roughy. Mm -hmm. But the lower the DHA, now DHA, if you're in the ocean, if it's cold, if it's dark, and if, it's, uh, if you don't get any light, then 
it can cause you to live a long time. There is a shark in the Arctic that may live over a thousand years because of DHA. But people talk about don't eat the food like in the tropics if you're up in the snow country because you should eat local. Well, mm -hmm. how unlocal can you get to go down in the ocean and be at near 34 degrees when you're used to being in California here and eat something uh, of a totally different climate that is meant for a different oil, just like you have a, uh, a, a, a what do you call it? A, uh, an oil is different for your mountaintop than it is. Remember the 10, 20, 30 oils right. and all of that. Right, right, so same, yeah. same thing, same common sense that if you have a oil like a butter for a fish, they will die because it won't get uh, liquid. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, coconut oil, coconut oil, probably, what is it? 78 degrees automatically turns liquid Melts from out. art. We use our coconut oil jar here as a thermometer to tell <laughs> when it goes from one to the other. So going, since Morley is not here, um, <clears throat> and I, I'm going to butcher probably his, his argument, but um, so the reason why he's got people doing the cod liver oil thing um, is because it, it contains the vitamin A in, in higher amounts than I think you can get from dairy foods and, you know, according to him, like butter and ghee and things and milk and, and cream. Um, but it also has vitamin D and it's got a lot of this, this mineral balance in there. Um, so that's his reasoning for it. And, and but would you suggest if you're going to do something like that, if you're concerned about getting the vitamin A, the retinol, you should get it maybe from other sources? It is so easy. And guess what? Macular degeneration is a combination of vitamin A and omega-3 fatty acids. Omega, vitamin A is not that toxic, but as soon as you put omega-3s to it, then you get drusen. Look it up in the internet. That's what causes macular degeneration and retinal detachment as well. What is drusence, you said? Look you at said. my list of, uh, by the way, I've got about 45 or 50 different names for yellow fat disease. They call it all kinds of names like, I'll just read a few in alphabetical order. Age 50 <laughs> effect, black kidney, blue kidney, bovine renal lipoposcanosis, brown atrophy of neuronia, brown atrophy of the heart, brown atrophy of the liver, brown fat disease, brown heart disease, cardiac necrosis, the cumulative lipoposcanosis, on and on and on. I just started the list. And they are the beginning of of uh, muscular dystrophy, muscular sclerosis, uh, Parkinson's disease, Lou Gehrig's disease, uh, autism, uh, Crohn's disease. In fact, Crohn's disease is a latter form of brown bowel disease, which is a type of yellow waxy fat disease. Uh, you can't make mm. this stuff up. <laughs> Yeah. So where, where are you digging to get all this information and just um, unpublished or not unpublished, but un, unproduced documents like journals and going through all the studies from the 1800s and these types of things? The back door. See, people go into omega-3 fatty acids. All they're going to get is it's good for your bones. It's good for depression. It's good for your pineal gland. It's good for this. Uh, a friend of mine, one time I made a business card and I had all these things I did. And a friend looked at it and said, you know, if I picked this up in an auto repair shop or a, an auto supply shop and it said all these things, I put it back on the shelf. shelf. Mm -hmm. Immediately, I threw all my business cards away. <laughs> and it's the same thing. When it cures everything, we should be suspicious. It, it's curing everything now. What I do is go in the back door. I put in yellow fat disease, bears, yellow fat disease, bats. Yellow fat disease, ants. Yellow fat disease, mink. Yellow fat disease, horses. On on throughout the entire zoological dictionary. Mm -hmm. And they all get yellow fat disease. And where do they get it? From polyunsaturated fatty acids. Not omega-6s, but omega-3s. I've never been able to find a single case of omega-6s causing yellow fat disease. And Monsanto has known this and has been making a fortune on it since the 1960s when they started removing omega-3s or protecting us from them covertly while promoting them out of the other side of their mouth. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I hope you guys are enjoying the show. We're with Mr. Adam Bergstrom. His website is uh, solartiming.com, and this is episode 680. We're going to take a little break right now, but when we come back, um, I want to get into some of these sort of arguments that people will say. Like people will say, well, you know, I take my fish oil, I feel great. I take my fish oil, and it seems to be lowering my inflammation. I take my fish oil, and my pain is gone, and all this type of stuff. So we're going to kind of address that when we get back from the break. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. If you know of anyone that's really into fish oil, or really into DHA or um, omega threes, uh, pass this show on to them because um, you know for me, I think this health quest is always about learning new things, and even if it sort of shocks your worldview, and I think the problem with a lot of people is they buy into something and they just do it forever. And this is one of the reasons why I stopped doing the raw vegan diet. I was 100% raw vegan for seven years. And one of the reasons why I, I thought that I should probably stop that was I actually felt pretty good doing it. But I thought, what if it, you know, in 60 years from now, if I learned that that was the worst diet ever, for example, and then I thought to myself, well, Let's take the middle path, all right? So um, if I do the right things, let's say meat is really toxic for you, but I start eating some meat in the hopes that, or in the event that it is actually good for you, but it actually really is bad, and I'm, at, and I'm wrong about that. Well, I can mitigate that by other dietary and lifestyle protocols. So it's really important, I think, to to look at new information and to see and just not go through blindly for 30, 40 years taking something or believing in something. And then you can't go back. You can't go back 40, 50 years and fix that error. So we're all at this place in our life now where we can make changes. And so I want to make sure that we just kind of do a little thought experiment and go forward 30, 40, 50 years and look back at yourself today and say, is there anything I would have done different? So anyway, a little, a little rant there. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. Um, we are, we've got a couple sales going on right now that I want to tell you about. Um, but first let me tell you about, um, this really cool product called, uh, colostrum. It's really cool. I love this stuff. And it's, uh, something that I add to my smoothies every single day. We give it to the kids. We let them <laughs> consume this. It's just awesome, awesome stuff. And so here's Daniel talking about that. Forget superfoods. Colostrum is mammals' first food. Containing the essential building blocks for growth, gut integrity, and immune health. Often referred to as liquid gold, colostrum is known to balance immune function, support digestive health, and increase endurance and lean muscle mass. Colostrum's naturally balanced and living nutrition, which supplies growth and immune factors, is a delicious dose of restoration that's easy to use in powder or capsule form. Clean, conscientious, tested antibiotic-free, and produced in a U.S. GMP-certified facility, it's your first food for second chances. Yeah, guys, that was a little clip from Daniel. If you guys are watching live on video, you can see that. But this is just a really good product. And I just have to, you know, just be honest with you guys and tell you, like, I'd recommend this to my friends and family. My parents are on this stuff. It's great, great stuff. And I, it, it makes everything taste better. It makes everything creamy. Um, if you make smoothies or if you make, like, coffee, like I put it in our coffee, it just makes everything creamy and delicious. It's just, it's an awesome, awesome product. Uh, we buy the five pound or the two pound uh, containers and it lasts lasts us for like six months, even with a family of four. So it's, um, it's just a great, great product and something that I recommend um, everyone take because it's not just great for building uh, gut integrity, like Daniel was just saying, but it's also really great for modulating your immune system. So if you're, if you're interested in you know, modulating your immune system, especially during these times that we're living in right now and improving your digestion, I would really recommend getting on some of this uh, Colossum. It's really, really good. So click on over. If you guys are watching on video, there should be links down below for this and um, you can click on over. And then the other awesome little device I want to tell you about is the, uh, the Bellicon Rebounder. And here's our friend, Jason Prawl from the Human Longevity Project film. Talk about rebounding. And I will say that the Rebounder, doing it outside is the greatest thing you can do because getting outside with the light. We actually know that light, particularly sunlight is the most beneficial, actually charges the water and actually creates a motor-like effect. And this actually impacts the lymphatic system. So blood flow and lymphatic system will actually improve just by getting outside. Now, when you rebound, you're actually increasing that further. 
Yeah, I love rebounding. It's just part of my my daily protocol. I do it not daily, but th- uh, let's see, four days a week on the days that I don't work out. I work out with weights three days a week, and then I do uh, the rebounder four days a week uh, on the opposite days that I work out. And I just I just love it. Here's here's David Wolf talking about it as well. Absolutely. I I was just with the crew in Europe that does the Bellicon rebounder, which is an incredible rebounder. My God, what a machine. Mm-hmm. And it's, it doesn't use metal springs. It uses um, like flexi ropes. So it's very soft and fun and it's just great to play with. Yeah, guys, um, this Bellicon is great, 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 great. You probably see if you're following us on Instagram how often I post about it because it's just such a great machine. And for me, it's like it's really great to get outside, get some grounding, get some sunshine. Um, sometimes I'll even do the molecular hydrogen with it, but I'll, I'll get out there and just uh, jump up and down. Increases endorphins, your circulation, uh, flushes out your lymphatic system. It's just a great longevity-based exercise, and it's great if you have joint issues. Um, and if you're worried about balance, there's bars you can get. And so what I recommend is just getting one of these things. You can get the ones with the folded legs and then you can store underneath your bed. And if you are worried about the noise, it uses those flexi ropes. So like if you have a husband or wife or kids that are sleeping, you can do it in the same room with them and they won't even hear it. Um, and I love that aspect. It's silent and you know, you can do it if you want. Like I go outside and I do it and I listen to podcasts. Um, it's my way of learning. It's a little 30 minute session being outside and that's how I learn. Um, you know, I listen to stuff, but you can watch TV, which I wouldn't recommend, but you can do all kinds of cool things. So, um, the Bellicon rebounder, there's links down below. If you're listening to the audio version, everything will be available at extremehealthradio.com forward slash. I put the wrong thing. It's actually six, eight, zero. That's not 480. I, I don't know Dysle- dyslexia or something when I <laughs> created the thumbnail for the YouTube version, but it's actually six, eight, zero, as you can find the links to this uh, show and uh, one final thing, I wanted to tell you guys too. Also, let me bring um, myself up here so that uh, you guys can see. But um, the other thing I wanted to tell you about was the um, the Relax Far Infrared Sauna. We'll do a little spot for that in a second. Um, that's on sale until tonight, twelve four twenty twenty at eleven fifty nine p.m. Pacific time. So if you go to biochargeme.com and enter the code Black Friday, this all capitals Black Friday twenty. Um, you'll get $150 off of the Relax Sauna. So if you've been in the market for one for a while, now would be the time to grab one. And I, I recommend that a, a lot. I'll, I'll tell you more about that later, but really, really a great deal on that right now, as well as the AquaCure machine. Um, that's on sale for $500 off. That's 20% um, EHR20. So there's links to, the, to that in the Black Friday link down below. Um, if you're listening to the audio version of this, unfortunately, you will be past that deadline. So I apologize for that. So this is only for those of you that are watching live, uh, at least today um, on Friday, December 4th. So, okay, I think we got just about everything out of the way. Let me bring out Adam's back on. Um, so Adam, before the break, we're talking about, um, you know, a lot of the people that take like fish oil constantly will say, my inflammation is lower, maybe my cholesterol is dropped, or I feel less pain, um, you know, I feel more mobile, I feel better. What's going on with those people taking fish oil, do you think? One thing we know from Ray Pete and other sources, that low cholesterol is a problem, not Uh-oh. raised cholesterol. Mm-hmm. The other thing is they used to get rid of inflammation uh, about 50, 60 years ago by putting you under radiation. It worked every time, back aches, all kinds of things. So they realized, hmm. And as Emmanuel Ravisi found out, that fish oils are akin to radiation. If you want to make yourself alkaline very quickly, it's either fish oil or even faster ionic radiation. So, yes, it works. It gets rid of inflammation, but at a price. It's like taking cortisol. Would you take uh, go to Whole Foods and buy a cortisol supplement? Everybody needs it, mm-hmm. but you can make it by just uh, getting a bill in the mail or having your spouse leave you or anything yeah. like that. That's how I get my cortisol. <laughs> so do you think that theoretically if someone had like maybe a surgery or something like that and they have lots of inflammation going on or maybe they break, uh, break an arm or something, if people were, were to take fish oil for maybe like a week or something, um, would that be, if you were going to do it, would that be the safest time to do it to lower that inflammatory process, do you think? Or should it be avoided altogether? 100% right. You're right on track. Transplant doctors use it for that. They prefer the drugs though. But in the know, 
they know to use omega-3 fatty acids. That's why it knocks out the immune system, which means you're vulnerable to a lot of other things, but you're more vulnerable to losing an organ. You know, my own sister-in-law uh, had a transplant about 30 years ago, so she's alive because of a donor cycle. She's got a 30-year-old a biker's liver to this day, and she's still alive and thriving today. Oh, my gosh. So she had a liver transplant 30 years ago. Yeah, about the same time that, uh, what's his name from, uh, David uh, Crosby. David Crosby uh-huh. got his, and uh, who played J.R. Hewing, whatever his name was, he got one, too. He's, uh, Pat- he's Patrick gone out Duffy? Can- Is that Patrick uh, Duffy? No, uh, the, the uh, Mary Martin's son. Uh, he was in I Dream of Genie, and then he went yeah. into Dallas. He was the villain in Dallas. I remember that. I who shot was, Jr. Right? <laughs> yeah, who shot Jr. Well, anyway, he got he, he died of cancer. But uh, David uh, Crosby, as far as I know, well, he's been up here doing COVID. Co- uh, no, no. Uh, when we had the uh, the uh, evacuations, he was doing concerts for us up here. He's still very oh. alive and well. So, what do you think is going on? Because when people get a, a a lung transplant or a liver transplant, don't they have to be on some sort of immune suppressing uh, medication for the rest of their life so they don't, so their body doesn't reject the organ? Yep. And now omega-3 fatty acids, you could do that too, but it adds to the aging process. As I said, uh, you won't die from taking cod liver oil right away. Now, some people do. You get the age-related diseases. If you get muscular sclerosis, Uh, Parkinson's, any of those, you can go pretty quickly, mixed dementias. But most people don't notice it. That's why it's such a perfect scam. Since 1929, when inaccurate tests were done by George and Mildred Burr, and the refutations were there right away from uh, Rice University there in, in, uh, in Houston, but they ignored those because the fish oil industry was on the rocks. Petroleum had replaced them using it in all the paints in the world. And so they had to do something with it. And this was the perfect way is to declare them essential fatty acids when they're not essential at all. The reason they find them in the brains is because we take so many supplements and we eat so many fish. You can live on fish, uh, in the, uh, the, especially the warm water fish. You're not going to die right away. You're going to live a shorter life. The shorter lives are in the sea people. And if you check, the desert people live the longest. The Apache Indians do not allow any kind of fish to be eaten or any animal that eats a fish, whether water, fowl, or they won't eat bears. They only eat vegetarian herbivores that grouse. Uh, of course, now the Apaches are probably leaving that. Geronimo never had a single fish in his life, was a very strong warrior, survived bullets, wounds, battle scars, and uh, all of his uh, tribulations of starvation and everything, ended up at 80 years old, very rich, selling uh, trinkets uh, to uh, unsuspecting uh, white men, and uh, and he got dead drunk because he used to drink a lot, and fell off his horse in the middle of a rainstorm at 80 years old and died of pneumonia. A few days uh, later. Yeah, I remember you mentioned that, I think, on Matt's show. That's crazy. Um, yep. So when these polyunsaturated fatty acids are getting in the body, what are they doing? I mean, I know they're oxidizing, right? And that's part of the problem is this uh, lipid peroxidation. Um, and they kind of show up as skin spots, but people call them liver spots on your skin, right? But um, what, what, what's going on inside the body that's actually causing this raising inflammation and oxidation kind of all over the place? Yes, any kind of stress. Now, if you go out on the beach, you're more likely to get uh, age spots because the excess sunlight is a stress, and so it stresses the skin. Mm -hmm. But what's not realized, if you put your liver under any stress, glyphosate, whatever you're going to take that's going to bug it, then automatically you get the lipofuscin reaction in the liver. So when a person has it in the skin, it's more likely that they have it in their iris, and our radiologists can see it quite easily. It's Mm -hmm. going to be in the heart, shrunken heart disease. Uh, It's in the liver, waxy, fatty liver disease. It's in the lungs, and it's throughout the body, in the kidneys and the endocrine glands and the pineal gland, all of those 
all of those places are highly infected with lipofuscin. If a person lives to 100, their cells are 95% lipofuscin. 95%. That means if I was in this room here and 95% of the uh, clutter was around me, you would think I could move around it. What people don't realize and what doctors didn't realize till recently, within the last decade, they thought lipofuscin was passive. It was like furniture in your room. So an average person in their 50s and 60s and 70s can have 45 to 50 percent lipofuscin clogging up their mitochondria and the rest of their cells. Well, they figured, well, it's passive. You still have that other space to operate your body in. But now it's they know it's more like rodents in your room. They're active. They're progressive. I, I mean, they're they're uh, interactive with you and the main weapon they have is iron. So it doesn't matter. Say I have a little bit of iron in my body. Lipofuscin craves it. It goes and collects it. Lipofuscin is only controlled, of, only composed of about 1% to 2% of iron. And yet that 1% to 2% uh, iron acts like an iron overload and kills people. Uh, imagine the bulk of a man holding a gun. The iron is the gun and the man that holds it is the lipofuscin but the lipofuscin is what pulls the trigger of the gun which is the iron so the lipofuscin is the greater uh the greater threat by the way you had a guest on called uh brian peskin mm -hmm. interesting peskin means fish i but, know right <laughs> <laughs> but he's against the uh, fish oil i disagree with almost everything he says except the part about fish oil mm -hmm. and he says quite correctly that when you have lipofuscin you have all this protein that's involved in it but it's not the protein the protein has been collected from cells the oil is the control and in fact Emmanuel Ravisi said the same thing omega all of the oils are what causes acid alkaline minerals almost have nothing to do with it and anyone can read Ravisi's textbook. It's on the internet for free, thanks to that crazy pharmacist who put mm -hmm. it up there. I I have two copies of it myself uh, that I managed to get before Ravisi went on his cosmic vacation at 101. I've talked wow. to him on the phone before, and mm -hmm. uh, but now thanks to the crazy pharmacist, everybody can get a copy, and anybody down the line who is worried about cancer in their family or whatever should make a copy of that book because it may not be on the internet forever. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's a blessing because I can use the search function and look up things from Ravisi as I did for magnesium and iron in preparation for this show. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is the, I would say he's the ultimate take on omega-3 fatty acids. So it's interesting what you said there about going back to your analogy with it being more like rodents, because on one level, if you have just the accumulation of excess space, maybe inside the cell, um, then you can start thinking about, okay, maybe it's causing some sort of like um, fibrosis or something where uh, the tissue becomes less malleable, it can't work properly and these types of things. But if it's actually like scavenging around and um, interacting with mitochondria, DNA and things like that, then you're looking at something that much more nefarious than just fibrosis and that itself, you know, you get all these organs that shrink as a result of fibrosis, right? Um, so if it's actually damaging mitochondria, then you're looking at energy loss and all kinds of things not working properly as a result of that, right? It attacks the mitochondria. You know, years ago, I was a phone man and I went into a movie star's house one time and he was painting and the room was so crowded, I had to go sideways to get through to the bedroom to fix the telephone. Okay. Uh, out in the backyard, he had 12 St. Bernard's, by the way. But he could function. He, he loved to live like that. He was a pack rat and he did fine. But imagine if that furniture would be attacking him at night. That would not be a good thing. And that's what lipofuscin does. It's very active. It causes peroxidation of all kinds, superoxides, a whole list of them, ozone, mm -hmm. etc. Does it also cause fibrosis? Yes, it's a major cause of fibrosis. And uh, uh, fibrosis has many names. In fact, some of the yellow fat disease names uh, definitely have fibrosis in the title. Wow. So it's going, so, my goodness. I mean, you know, it's like, I'm so glad I don't sell or have a company that <laughs> promotes that. I mean, 
I know Matt Blackburn did at one point, and you know I have to give massive um, credit to him because there is a lot of people. There are a lot of people out there selling, um, you know, damaging supplements like this, and the the research is out there, and they don't want to listen to it. They don't want to look at it because of you know a bottom line from their business. And so I really give a lot of credit to Matt for for changing the course of his career based on this because. Um, Gosh, that would be difficult, wouldn't it? He walked away from a lot of money. I really got to admire Matt. He's a free thinker. I, I really admire him. And what I like about Matt, he's hands on. He doesn't just talk it. He actually, instead of uh, walking his talk, he talks his walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. He was telling me the other day that he bought one of the um, the, the hydrogen machines that, that we uh, promote. And um, and he was telling me, or he I, th I think he copied me on an email that he wrote to George, and he was telling me about how he souped up his car at one point with the hydrogen. And, you know, of course, that's, of course that's what Matt would do, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, by the way, I'm a big fan of, uh, of uh, rebounding. It's a big thing. And I... One thing you might consider, besides selling the rebounders to people, why don't you represent Olympic trampolines? They're really excellent. It's a big ticket item, and we tried to do that, but we're too small. They're not interested in us. But you have a large enough audience. Maybe you can talk them into it, and that's a lot of money. And Olympic trampolines are wonderful. I've jumped on them a lot, and they're very healthy for you. But otherwise, when when I had my mobile home in Carpinteria, I had one, two, three, four rebounders. So I couldn't go to my kitchen without going over the rebounders because you know how people just buy a machine and shove it in the corner and it never gets used <laughs> again? I yep. was going to make sure I couldn't get to my kitchen without jumping over rebounders. Yeah, they're they're such great machines. And, you know, when I first thought that, like, they look so bizarre, you know, jumping up and down, but they're really a longevity exercise, right? And they're um, great for the lymphatic system drainage and things. It used to be called the uh, lymphasizer, and uh, Dr. Arthur Guyton was a fan of them. He was a friend of, uh, what is the name, Who the, the guy that wrote the book, uh, Seven, anyway, it's an immune system book about rebounding, and uh, excellent. He knew a lot about lymphatics. You don't do deep tissue uh, 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 massage. You do light tissue massage, and you do cross-crawling and all of those things. Cross-crawling on a rebounder builds brains. It's mm -hmm. a really good way to uh, increase intelligence and also prepare us for space flight because it converts – it takes calcium out of the bone and puts it in the pineal gland and takes silica out and puts it in the bone. That is awesome, awesome stuff. All right, we're going to take another little break now, and I think what we'll do, Adam, is come back and uh, we'll take some questions from the chat room. So if you guys are watching on Facebook or if you're watching, let's see, I think we're broadcasting on two pages on Facebook. So if you're watching on Facebook, head over to extremehealthradio.com slash YouTube. And that will redirect you to the YouTube version because I can't manage all these kind of places to ask questions at once. Um, so come on over there and ask your questions and write them in all caps. Um, and But when we first come back from the break, Adam, I want to talk and see about some ways that we can um, not just eliminate you know, lipofuscin from our bodies, but how to get rid of them, how to get them out. Because it's one thing you know, to, to not eat fish anymore or to not take DHA or fish oil, but then what are we gonna do to get this stuff out? And I think there are some things that we can do and we'll discuss that when we come back from the break. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. Make sure to go visit Adam's website, solartiming.com. I mean, this guy does the research. It's amazing. The amount of information that he is has access to floating around in his head is just, it's just, it's so awesome. So go over to solartiming.com if you really want to, um, really want to dive deeper in with your health. And uh, so this is the other product I was telling you about before. This is the uh, the sauna therapy device. Actually, let me bring this up here on the screen for those that are watching um, on video. And this is the Relax Far and Fred Sauna. And we get questions all the time, like when is it going to go on sale? And so what we've done is we have ex extended the sale all the way up until Friday, which is today. Um, uh, 
at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. So if you go to biochargeme.com and enter the code Black Friday, all caps, Black Friday 20, um, you'll be able to get access to um, this for 150 bucks off. And I really recommend sauna therapy. This is such a great, great tool. So here's a, a couple of little audio clips talking about it. I think you guys were just talking about sweating, right? Mm -hmm. And and uh, detoxification. The so sauna. that's, that's gonna be huge for people. No, it's uh, as long as you make sure you get plenty of the, the good minerals, man, uh, having a regular sweat in a far infrared sauna is one of your best health practices you can come up with. Mm -hmm. yeah, because you, you, get, you get rid of a wide array of toxins. I mean, you get rid of mercury, you get rid of iron. They would have you believe you can't get rid of iron, but uh, a lot of the older clinicians called the skin the third kidney. Mm-hmm. It's super important, guys, and I, I really recommend bringing the sauna therapy into your, your home. You can get one of these units, and uh, they're portable. You can break it down. You can even store it like you can use a single time. Uh, break it down, store it underneath the bed if you're concerned about space. You can loan it to a friend. It heats up immediately. It is very low EMF. It uses far infrared light which is incredible because for, for penetrating deep into your tissues. Uh, and what it does is oscillates your fat cells or, or, or your cells and um, allows for those toxins that are stored inside the cell to come out through your skin, uh, bypassing the liver and kidney, which is really important because you don't want to put more stress on those, on those organs. And this is a really cool way to like sit in there for 20, 30 minutes, watch a documentary, uh, your head sticks out, which I love. That's my personal favorite. Um, and it's an incredible, incredible uh, way of detoxification and detoxifying. Listen to Robert Rowan talk about it. It's one of the biggest. The other issue is the chemicals in the environment. And mm. to get rid of chemicals in the environment, probably the most cost-effective method is to sweat them out. And bar infrared saunas is going to help sweat them out. Uh -huh. I mean, look at the breast. What is the breast? It's 90% fat. It's only 10% mammary tissue. Mm -hmm. So the fat of the breast is going to store all these poisons, which act as estrogens, and hold it right up against sensitive mammary tissue. And so these toxins get stored in the fat cells, and you can sweat these things out. It's been shown that when you sweat in, like, far infrared saunas, you actually can begin downloading toxins from your body. Yeah, and what I love about it is, like I said before, it doesn't put a lot of excess needed energy to be used by the liver and the kidneys to be able to detoxify. Uh, it's just doing it passively through uh, your largest eliminative organ of your body, which is your skin, uh, for these things to come out. And um, doing a regular session, I do mine like three or four days a week. Uh, just a, I used to do it like five or six days a week, and I would now, but um, <laughs> I, I've got two-year-old kids, uh, twins, and so it's a little difficult. But um, if you guys want access to this, it's on sale for another, what, 12 hours or 11 and a half hours. Um, Biochargeme.com and then Black Friday 20. And if you're having issues, if it doesn't work or something like that, sometimes people will type it in wrong. Uh, just email me and uh, I'll, I'll get you sorted out for that's 150 bucks off. Um, so, okay, so here's the other product that I, I use it a lot and I don't really even talk about it. I don't know why I don't talk more about this, but this is the red light therapy device uh, from Juve. And red light therapy is, um, it's really great for uh, stimulating your mitochondrial production uh, to holding on to more light from the sun. Uh, it helps to increase the electron tra chain transport system uh, to make more ATP and to make structured water in your mitochondria as well. All that stuff is great, but what does it really do? So it's really great for helping, uh, you know, skin issues, um, it, it make more collagen uh, production in your skin. Um, it helps with muscle recovery and peak performance, and it's really amazing for scars and wrinkles and stretch marks. Uh, if you have a wound, if you have a surgery, or if you break an arm, or if you get a deep cut, um, people use it for wound healing. It's really great for anti-aging, reduces joint inflammation. It's really incredible. Um, device and I, I do it every single day, especially during this time of year. Um, and you know, when there's a lack of sunlight, I, I make sure that my light protocol is on point. So here's uh, Dr. Stephanie Seneff talking a little bit about this. Your commercial was interesting to me because it turns out that infrared light is a uh, very special light that grows the exclusion zone. I don't know if you've talked to Gerald Pollack. Do you have, have you ever interacted with Gerald Pollack? Yeah, he's been on the show. He's great. Yeah, because yeah. he's the one that I learned this from one of his papers that when you expose the body to infrared light and they found that the exclusion zone water, which is that special structured 
filtered water that's created by the sulfates in the blood, that grew by a factor of four in the in the response to the red light, the infrared light, which is going to be in the red light. They're going to have some infrared there. And one of the key benefits of the red light might be increasing that exclusion zone, which is going to actually increase the strength of the battery, which is going to supply more energy to the cells because that exclusion zone is the basis of the battery, I believe, that supplies electricity to the body. Yeah, it helps the mitochondria create ATP and it, it just right, sh- exactly. sh- shrinks the respiratory proteins. I mean, light therapy is huge. Yeah, it's just such a really great tool that we have access to, um, you know, in our world today. And it's great that we have these uh, technologies of getting this frequency of light onto our skin and onto our bodies. And, you know, like I said before, nothing really... um, replaces the sun, right? The sun is the ultimate healer. So, but these tools are really great to have. Um, and the Juve red light therapy device is, is the one that I use. I I love it a lot. And you can go through our store, biochargeme.com. And there may be, is there a discount code for that? On a lot of the products, there's a discount code. I'm not sure if there is on this one or not, but, um, yeah, if you go through our link and you're interested in setting one of these things up, they're usually typically about 10 minute sessions. So, um, I'll just stand there and listen to a podcast. What I'm going to get soon, I think is, um, a couple other lights to get all around my body, kind of like this girl is here in the picture, and get on a vibration plate and kind of stack a couple things going on at the same time. I'll still do like PEMF therapy as I'm doing the red light. Because if I'm going to spend 10 minutes of, you know, doing something, I might as well get the most bang for the buck. So uh, these Juve lights are just great, 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 great tools to have in your home. Uh, like I always say, turn your home into a healing center. Um, really important. Just come, make your home a place where you can heal. Um, and use in case of any acute injuries. If you have uh, you know things that come up with your kids or anything like that, it's great to have these tools at home to be able to, to, to deal with these things that might come up. So hope you guys are enjoying the show. The other thing I want to let you know about is not only